problem 7 two synchronous motors are connected to the bus of a large system through a transmission line the ratings of the various components are motor 1 mva 440 volt 0 0.1 per unit transient reactants line 0 0.05 ohm reactants the large system with short circuit mva at its bus at 440 volt is 8 the short circuit mva at its bus at 440 volt is 8 that is mva rating is 8 kv is 0 0.440 when the motors are operated at 400 volt calculate the short circuit symmetrical current fed into a three phase fault at motor bus so there are two motors connected to a bus and this bus is getting connected to a large system through a transmission line with reactants 0 0.05 ohm the motor ratings are given and the large system ratings are given okay that is at the across at the terminals of the large system the voltage is 440 volt and the mva rating is 8 okay so given the type of fault is a three phase symmetrical fault at the motor bus at the motor bus a three phase symmetrical fault occurs when the motor is operated at 400 volt okay so here the large system feeding the line can be considered as a voltage source okay so that is one thing which is different compared to other problem so they had given the large system operates at 440 volt and its mva rating is given so we can consider the large system as a constant voltage source so coming to step one choosing appropriate base value so let us consider the motor ratings as the common base what are the motor rating 1 mva 0.44 kv the motor rating is 1 mva 0.44 kilo volt okay so draw the pre-fault reactance diagram so the large system is represented by a constant voltage source denoted as VLS, V large system. Then this large system is getting connected to the motor bus through a transmission line. And at the motor bus, we have two motors connected in parallel. So now we have to find out the reactances of the various components. Okay. So the motor ratings are chosen as the common base values. So, there will not be any change in XM dash and XM2 dash. Okay. So, same value J.1. So, J.1 per unit transient reactants. Okay. So, for the transient reactants, we denote as a single dash. So, that is the reason I have taken EM1 dash, XM1 dash, EM2 dash, XM2 dash. So, since the motor ratings are considered as the common base, no change in the reactance values. So, write as such. Okay. So, now the transmission line reactance is given as 0.05 ohms. Okay. So, we have to convert that to per unit using the formula X line actual by X line base. X line actual is 0.05 ohm. X line base is KVB square by MVAB. So, what is KVB square? 0.44 square what is mvab 1 so on substituting you will get x line per unit is j.2583 per unit x line is j.2583 per unit okay so pre-fault voltage is the voltage at the fault terminals f4 given the fault occurs at the motor bus so this is the bus at which the two motors are connected in parallel. So, I have represented the pre-fault voltage across the fault terminals. So, step 2, we have to calculate the pre-fault voltage at the fault terminals. Okay. So, pre-fault voltage in per unit is equal to the actual voltage across the motor terminals divided by base voltage. Okay. So, what is the actual voltage? It is 400 volt because it is given in the problem. So, when the motors are operated at 400 volt, a fault is occurring. 
okay so the actual voltage of the motor at which the fault occurring is 400 volt and what is the base voltage it is 440 volt so the pre fault voltage across the faulted terminals is equal to actual by base voltage which is 400 by 440 volt okay so here again should be careful about so the actual voltage at the time of fault occurrence is 400 volt base voltage of the motor is 440 volt so we got per unit value of pre fault voltage is 0 0.9091 per unit okay now we have to find VLS we have to find the voltage of the large system in per unit okay so voltage of the large system it's given in kilovolt see large system at 440 volt so actual value of the large system voltage is 440 volt what is the base value motor rating which is 440 so we will get voltage of the large system as 440 by 440 which is equal to 1 per unit okay so these two steps are slightly different compared to other problem okay so calculation of pre fault voltage as well as the voltage of large system so instead of a generator we have a large system and its MVA rating and KV are given okay so a generator will have some internal reactants represented by e, uh, xg here we don't represent because we as such we take it as a constant voltage source okay so if you are proceeding the problem by thevenin's approach the pre fault voltage will be equal to thevenin's voltage which is 0 0.9091 per unit step 3 you have to draw you have to find thevenin's impedance at the fault location so for that what i am doing i am doing i am going to short circuit all the voltage sources so what are the voltage sources vls is short circuited em1 dash and em2 dash are short circuited the motor voltages as well as the v large system voltage source is also shorted so now you represent the zth at the fault terminals so this circuit can be redrawn like this both are similar because here it is a separate point separate node so the three reactances are coming in parallel j.2583 j.1 j.1 so is that th is the equivalent impedance which is 1 by 1 by j.2583 1 by j.1 plus 1 by j.1 which will give you is that th is j.0419 per unit so now draw the thevenin's equivalent circuit vth in series with is that th vth is 0 0.9091 per unit is a th is 0 0.0419 per unit and represent the short circuit at the fault terminals so as a result a fault current if flows which is found by kvl vth by is a th you will get as j 21.697 per unit okay so now step 5 as i told in the previous problem Yeah, in this problem, they have asked to calculate only the fault current at the motor bus. Okay, so that is the reason why we are not proceeding to find I1 and I2. So when should you find I1 and I2? When there is any other part beyond the fault terminals. But in this problem, there is motor. But they have asked to calculate only the symmetrical short circuit current at the motor bus. Okay, so fault occurs at the motor bus. So it's enough to calculate only till if but in problems 1 and 2 if you see they have asked to calculate the fault current at generator terminal motor terminal as well as the fault point okay so that is the reason we are finding ig ig double dash im double dash and if but here they have asked to calculate only the symmetrical short circuit current at motor bus so that's why we are stopping at if okay note down this point then step 5 to calculate the actual value of fault current for that we need the base value kvab by root 3 kvb so kvb kvab can be written as mvab into 1000 so what is mvab 1 mva 
the motor rating is the common base. What is KVB? 0.44. So we got the base value of current. Now calculate the actual value have written in kilo amperes. If you take only the magnitude, it is 28.469 kilo amperes. Problem 8. A generator is connected through a circuit breaker to a transformer. The ratings of the generator are 100 MVA, 18 KV, XD double dash is 19 percentage, XD, XD dash is 26 percentage, XD is equal to 130 percentage. See, listen here, for the generator, MVA rating is given, KV rating is given and the reactance of the generator during subtransient, transient and steady state. XD double dash, XD dash and XD are given. So the transformer ratings are 100 MVA, 240 by 18 kilovolt, star delta, X is equal to 10 percentage with 18 kilovolt on delta side. If a three phase short circuit occurs on the HT side, high tension side of the transformer at rated voltage and no load, find the initial symmetrical RMS current in the transformer winding on the high tension side. B. The initial symmetrical RMS current in the line on the low tension side. Okay. So, you have drawn the uh, single line diagram. We have a generator with the ratings marked and a transformer. And after the transformer, somewhere after the transformer on its high tension side, a three phase short circuit fault is occurring. So, I have denoted the fault point as F. Okay. And here, one again, you have to note down that the generator or the power system network is unloaded. It is unloaded. Okay. So, what we have to assume? Assume the pre fault voltage at the fault terminals as 1 per unit. Okay. So, the pre fault voltage of an unloaded power system is assumed as 1 per unit. So, now the transformer they had given the rating as 240 by 18, but the generator KV is 18. So, it is not possible to connect as 240 by 18. So, we have to reverse the transformer 18 by 240 and 18 kV is delta side. They had given 18 kV on the delta side and star side is 240 kV and 240 kV side is the high tension side and the fault occurs on the high tension side. Okay. So, with respect to the transformer, I have divided the power system network into two sections, section 1, section 2. See, listen here. Now, there are three reactances values of the generator, subtransient, transient and steady state. But they have asked you to calculate the initial symmetrical RMS current. Initial symmetrical. So, initial fault current means the current during subtransient state. Because as soon as the fault occurs, subtransient state comes. Okay. Followed by transient and steady state. Okay. So, in the calculations, you have to use only XD double dash. Why only XD double dash? Because I have asked to calculate the initial symmetrical current. So, the initial current is the subtransient fault current. So, you have to take XD double dash value. Okay. So, now what is step 1? You have to choose appropriate base value. You have to choose appropriate base value. Okay. So, we are taking section 1 ratings that is the generator ratings as the common base ok so what is MVAB 100 what is KVB 18 kilo volt for the generator side then using the transformation ratio of this transformer we find the KVB in section 2 what is KVB in section 2 section 1 KVB 18 into 240 by 18 which is 240 kilo volt so, now draw the pre-fault reactance diagram. So, we have the generator and the transformer. At the high tension side of the transformer, the fault occurs. So, the fault terminals is FO and mark the pre-fault voltage. Okay. Now, yeah, since the generator ratings are taken as the common 
base there will not be any change in x d double dash which is j.19 okay old value and the new value will be the same similarly for the transformer also with respect to the primary side that is 18 kilo volt side if you calculate x t1 nu it will be j.1 into 100 by 100 into 18 by 18 the whole square so no change in the transformer reactants also okay j.1 so pre fault voltage so step 2 how to calculate the pre fault voltage i told you since the system is unloaded assume the pre fault voltage is 1 per unit okay since the generator is running on no load so the induced em of eg which is used which will be useful for solving the for the steps so the induced em of eg also will be equal to 1 per unit the pre fault voltage the induced em of as well as the thevenin voltage all three will be the same okay so assume pre fault voltage is 1 per unit which will be equal to vth which will also be equal to the induced emf of the generator okay so we are not using the uh, thevenin's approach the method one kvl approach only we are using if you use thevenin's approach also you will uh, get the same answer okay so step three draw the fault condition reactance diagram so how it is different from the pre-fault reactance diagram replace the fault terminals by a short circuit okay and in the short circuit the initial fault current that is if double dash corresponding to the subtransient state flows that is the reason why i have chosen as if double dash okay so now what is eg double dash what is eg double dash it is one per unit so this eg double dash is one per unit okay so by using kvl if double dash is equal to eg double dash divided by j x d double dash plus x t okay so eg double dash is nothing but v pre fault 1 divided by j.19 plus j.1 which will give you the answer okay so now what is asked you have to find out the rms values of the initial symmetrical fault current on the ht side and b part is on lt side okay so step 4 to find the base current on ht side and base current on lt side base current on ht side and base current on lt side okay so now base current on ht side is mvab into 1000 by root 3 kvb on the ht side so what is the ht side mvab 1000 what is the ht side kvab ht side kvab it is 240 ht side section 2 section 2 is ht side which is 240 you will get the base current on lt side 100 mvab 18 kvb section 1 lt side falls on section 1 you got the base current so now the solution is a part the initial symmetrical RMS current on HT side is IF double dash HT is equal to IF double dash per unit into IB HT. Similarly, B part initial symmetrical RMS current on LT side. So IF double dash LT is equal to IF double dash per unit into IB LT. Okay. So you got the value. So this modulus I have written only the magnitude by removing the J. Okay. Written only the magnitude. So in this problem you should be careful about this fault condition reactance diagram. Okay. Because we have assumed pre-fault voltage is equal to 1 per unit. Because it is an unloaded system. And induced EM of EG will be equal to induced em of eg will be equal to v pre fault is equal to 1 per unit if you are proceeding the same problem with thevenin's method you have to take vth as 1 per unit you will get the same solution only this step step 3 will differ in method 1 and method 2 and step 4 will be the same okay because it is finding only the actual values